don't write your address one of the second tip okay common mistake that everyone doing is writing their address that to very detailed address who is going to send something to your address by looking at your resume correct no one will send any gift to your address by looking at your resume so company to location bengaluru job title let us say software engineer so basically now this is for those who haven't done something that has scattered a lot of users or not generating a lot of revenue a very very important section okay so award should be there why because see they don't know you you don't know them you want to create a positive impression welcome back to uncommon geeks my name is vasant i hope you all doing well almost two weeks back i ran a campaign called review your resume so you upload your resume i'm going to review it for free and share my feedback with you more than 500 uh, people registered for the campaign i shared it took me almost one and a half to two weeks to review all the resumes personally and share my feedback over gmail and the linkedin then i said like hand picked the resumes from this particular campaign i'm going to share it with all of you so that you can make your resume in that particular pattern so there is a high chance that your resume get shortlisted in the next interview process so more than 1500 people have registered for the campaign and i shared my resumes to the templates to all of them over my gmail and the google drive so one thing that i realized by running these two campaign is even after having such a massive information about the creating of the resume distributing the resume etc still people are not creating the resumes in a right way so there is lot of gap between what is the company is looking from the resume and what people have in their resume so today i decided to make a re resume creation video where if i have to build my resume just now without any preparation i'm going to build my resume from scratch using a manual process no ai tools just how if i have to build my resume today how i'm going to build that that i'm going to explain step by step to you okay so there are a lot of ai tools also to build the resume if you're someone interested in knowing them mention that in the comment section and i'm i'll uh, i'll make another video on that and if you're someone who haven't received free resume templates that i had distributed mention that in the comment section i'll be more than happy to give the resume templates to you as well okay so in this video till the end i'm going to keep giving a lot of uh, tips in the resume that i have gathered from reviewing around 500 resumes so please watch the video till the end so that even if you already have a good resume there are areas where you can optimize it further okay and my name is vasanth and if you are not subscribed to uncommon geeks please subscribe to uncommon geeks and like the video and i've made lot of videos in the past which has been helped lot of people to clear their interview i'm sure you will also be benefited from my channel please so please subscribe without wasting further time let's get started so i've stopped using a lot of pc related softwares for editing and coding etc mostly i use a lot of online tools and today's video also i'm going to use some online tool for creating my resume that is google docs so as you can see this is my google docs and there are a lot of templates here as you can see template gallery okay and if you can click on template gallery you would see a lot of templates here freely available for you okay not just for the resume there are cover letter there are some brochures etc so, but i am going to create resume like as you saw in the thumbnail So this is one of my favorite templates to create a resume. You can pick any template that you are comfortable with. Okay, and my first advice is I'm going to give a lot of advice. Like I said, my first advice is stick to one page resume template or two page resume template. Don't go beyond two page template. If you ask me, I would even say don't even go to two page template. Have only one page resume. The reason for that is there is thousands of resume that will flow into a premium company. There is very less time for a system or a person to analyze the resume. So lesser the information, and if you can highlight the keywords, there is a high chance your resume get created. So I would highly encourage everyone to have one page resume. Okay, that's the first tip. wait for the second and for the tips okay now i've just clicked on it and i opened it so first thing that i'm going to do is enter my name okay wasn't but that is my name mention your name if your name is too long you can reduce the font size so that it fits in that line and don't ask me wasn't uh, my name is not fitting in the first line next is the uh, here as you can see the address so don't write your address one of the second tip okay common mistake that everyone doing is writing their address that to very detailed address who is going to send something to your address by looking at your resume correct no one will send any gift to your address by looking at your resume so don't write detail address it's a very personal information okay avoid keeping that in on your resume and if possible please also don't keep your date of birth people are not going to do anything with your date of birth so please don't mention that as well so name i have mentioned second line i am mentioning for the what is my designation or what i am doing so senior front end developer okay fine write your phone number and email id write your primary email id and always keep your phone number and email id on the top of the resume fourth tip okay don't keep it in the bottom because after review your, reviewing your resume the first thing that recruiter want to do is give a call to you or send an email so keep it on the top okay next 
Uh, next thing, let me start building, writing the resume. So company, so write your company, whichever the company that you're currently working. Okay, location, Bengaluru. So as you all know, I always lived my life in Bengaluru only. I haven't gone anywhere outside Bengaluru. So then I work as a senior software engineer currently. Okay, so what I have built. So let's say I have built a food delivery app. Food delivery app. So this app caters to one mil, maybe. 2 million plus users and it is generating the revenue revenue of 150 million every year i was a senior developer in this project and instrumental in building important modules such as delivery product discovery payment etc okay so if i have been working for swiggy and i have been work for their food delivery app this is what i would have been written in my resume okay so food delivery app the app caters to 2 million plus users and it's generating a revenue of 1 million 150 million every year i was a senior developer in this project and instrumental in building important modules such as Delivery, product discovery, and payment. Product discovery is the way you search and identify the food items. Okay. Since I haven't come prepared anything for the interview, I if I am building my resume from scratch just by analyzing whatever I work, this is how I would do. So next question people would ask is wasn't my app hasn't downloaded two million. So I don't have such a use huge user base. Neither it is uh, neither downloaded that much nor it is generating the revenue that you have mentioned. What to do? Let me do that as well. Okay. Company two. Location. Bengaluru job title let us say software engineer so basically now this is for those who haven't done something that has catered a lot of users or not generating a lot of revenue okay let's say I mentioned like video calling app I as a junior developer in this project I have built video calling library in Android and iOS. I used Swift in iOS and Kotlin in case of Android. This library works on WebRTC. Okay. Built in the case. Okay. So, what I have done? So, my app has no, no huge download, not generating a lot of revenue, but I have built some library that has a capability of catering a video calling needs across Android and iOS. So you may not have built this only, you might have built something similar. So any library or any open source contribution that you have done, that I mean, you built a company project, but later let's say it became an open source or something, identify something that is very critical that you can mention in the interview. See, you don't have to mention a lot of technicalities like uh, in Java, I built a REST API to log in where I take username, password, I validate it and return the result. Nobody's going to be interested in that. Something that drags somebody's attention. See, if I open this resume now, what I'm going to see, 150 million, something that my eye goes. 2 million plus users is something that my eye goes. Or WebRTC is something that my eye goes. So I am going to highlight, I'm going to see, read the text around that particular point. So extract such keywords that are worth mentioning in the resume and mention them. Okay. And if you have another company work, you can add it. If you have further more companies, you can again keep on adding and edit the projects. See, I have written description about a food delivery app like Swiggy in three lines. Okay, whatever the work that I have done. So you don't have to worry how to phrase it in a very minimal words. So keep only highlighting fact, not the detailed technicality of it. Okay, then the skills. So you can mention all the skills that you have an proficiency of intermediate, intermediate level and higher. Don't mention the things generally which you rarely use or you're not having very good understanding. So what are my skills? Let's say React JS, React Native, HTML. Okay. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript. I also know Angular. I also know Vue.js. I also know Node.js. Okay. And I also have an introductory. Okay. Introductory knowledge on Swift, Kotlin, basic knowledge on knowledge on 
DevOps concepts. Basic knowledge on our deployment using Kubernetes, Kubernetes and Docker. Okay, I'm not sure whether spelling is right, huh? Kubernetes and Docker. So see, I started writing my skills in such a way where whatever my core skills I mentioned first, then those which have an introductory knowledge like Swift and Kotlin. So if you ask a very deep technicality of Swift and Kotlin, I myself admitting I wouldn't be able to answer. Then I mentioned basic knowledge and deployment of Kubernetes and Docker. So if you give me with the help of internet, I'll be able to deploy something. So I am not saying like I'm going to do this from the scratch. Okay. So if you are so vocal in your resume, that will be very helpful for the interviewer. So let's say I won't, I haven't mentioned like uh, introductory knowledge on Swift and Kotlin, but interviewer has a very good knowledge on Kotlin. So he start asking a lot of questions on Kotlin. Then you will say, no, I know very basics of Kotlin. So this will create a problem where whatever, you, once if the interviewer thinks like, whatever you written on resume is not what is the, uh, what you know, then he starts questioning everything that you have written. So be vocal and be clear in mentioning the skills. You don't have to mention a lot of things, only things that you really know, mention it. Now, the tip number, I think five or six, very important thing is always keep skills in the top of your resume. Okay, like how in, as per the template. So it shouldn't be below the first site. First site, I mean like, let's say your resume is one template. It shouldn't go beyond the 30% of the resume. Always skills should be always on the top because that is something that recruiter or interviewer will look out to. Don't keep it at the bottom. Okay. Next, awards, a very, very important section. Okay. So awards should be there. Why? Because see, they don't know you you don't know them, you want to create a positive impression to them. What is the easiest way to do is some tell something about you that they think, yeah, he has done something, correct? So easiest way is that is through awards. So for example, you can mention like spot award. Okay, spot award. Spot award, you cannot just mention that. You have to mention why you got the spot award. For completing food delivery happen. 30 days, which was initially planned for 45 days. Okay. So there was a project which was supposed to be completed in 45 days, but with your immense effort, you made sure that is completed in 30 days. So therefore that you got the spot award. Next. Okay. Next is like you have got a employee of month. Of the month award. How many times you might have got? Let's say three times you have got. Three times in six months. Or why you would got a monthly award for delivering delivering project project on time and extending my help to juniors to on board to the project. Okay. So grammatically most of things are correct, but little bit you can optimize. So what I Point that I want to prove is see employee of a month is not a significant award. A lot of people will get the award if you are in any company. So what you have to mention is why you have gotten it. So understand this from this point of view. See, they don't know you. Even if you mention some generic awards which you have not got, also there is no problem. But write something, okay? Or if you have got something like IIT JE or any other uh, competitive exam, good ranking. You can mention that IIT JE hundred rank. Okay, I haven't got under rank. You all know I'm not from IIT. So any exam or any competition that where you have got a significant ranking and award that you can mention that here in the award section. So languages is useful if you're applying for a job outside India to very language specific countries like uh, Spain, you're applying. So you know Spanish, mention that. Germany, you're applying, you know German, mention that. Russia, you're applying, you know Russian, mention that. If you're in India, you know only English, you don't have to mention it like mentioning like Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam may not have a lot of value because it's not that language is nothing to do with the language. Companies generally look out for English and if you know English, that is good for them. Knowing any regional language may not make a lot of impact. So if you wish, you can keep. If you don't wish, you don't have to write that. Like I'm not writing. I might assume don't have a language section. Next is a college. So one of the very, very important aspect of colleges, I don't have to fill this. You would know when you finished your engineering and you're the if you typically write just two degrees, if you're just engineering, then write engineering and the way you're done your PUC, okay, or pre-university. In case if you're done master, then mention the master and the bachelors. Just stick to that, not anything beyond that. Two levels of 
degree is sufficient so if you if you are written like engineering it is obvious you have done a pre university if you are written masters obviously you have done the btech so if you not if you written masters and the bachelors it is obvious that you are written done pre university you don't have to mention that here okay one common problem that everybody has let's say this is some tip number 6 or 7 is they are not from a premium college they are from tier 2 and tier 3 college so in such cases mention the university name instead of a college name so every technical university in india affiliated to a university mention the university name which is popular so that there's a high chance they would consider that while then are there short testing your resume okay last thing is project so for people who did not get enough space in the top to write about project use this area again there is also not very not, not too much of a space if you can um, you can write two or three projects in one to two lines in the below as well okay so i'm done with my basic resume template thing okay whatever i wanted to explain so if, oh, another very important tip maybe it is eighth or ninth tip is don't keep education on the top after a certain number amount of experience nobody bothers like what is your education qualification so keep it in the bottom keeping it on the top will take good amount of space so your skills and experience move to the bottom which is very important for the resume shortlisting okay one last tip i'll tell before ending the video is don't create a very fancy resume like using a lot of infographics lot of images styling etc the reason for that is that might look very appealing for you but whenever you applying for a premium company most of the resumes shortlisted and rejected by a system called ats application tracking system so what it does is it extract the values from your resume compares that with a jd if both are matching it will process your resume we go to the next level if not it will immediately reject if it is if it is not ats friendly there is a high chance your resume gets rejected even before a first person taking a look at it so always keep a plain resume template like this okay and just black and white no need to use a multi colors as well okay um, these are all the very very basic aspects of resume if you can follow this there is a high chance your resume get shortlisted okay thank you so much for watching if you have any doubts regarding this particular resume walk through that i gave please mention that in the comment section i'm going to explain i'm going to explain in detail what uh, you can do so that you can improvise your resume okay and if you're not subscribed to my channel uncommon gives please subscribe like the video if you liked it comment about it and share it with your friends so that everybody get benefited out of it thank you so much for watching catch you in next video